In a case that's seen as a direct challenge to Roe versus Wade, the Supreme Court announced it will consider whether states can ban abortions before a baby is viable to survive outside of the womb. It's the first major abortion case with Justice Amy Coney Barrett on the bench. The case involves a Mississippi law that would ban abortions after the 15th week of pregnancy. The law has been blocked by lower courts. Supreme Court justices announced this week they will take up Dobbs versus Jackson Women's Health Organization, but will only consider one question, namely, quote, whether all pre-viability prohibitions on elective abortions are unconstitutional. The state's Catholic Diocese of Jackson and Biloxi have supported Mississippi's pro-life law. The day of the high court announcement this week, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki said President Biden is committed to codifying Roe and suggested the administration would fight any Supreme Court decision that limited abortion. Over the last four years, uh, critical rights, like the right to health care, the right to choose, have been under withering and extreme attack, including through draconian state laws. And the president and the vice president are devoted to ensuring that every American has access to health care, including reproductive health care. Governor Tate Reeves of Mississippi joins us now on Zoom. Governor, welcome to the show. First, what was your reaction when you heard the Supreme Court will be taking up your state's pro-life law? Well, I was very excited that the, the United States Supreme Court decided to take up uh, the 15-week abortion ban. I think this is uh, certainly the ideal time for the court to look at it. Um, the, the fact of the matter is um, that Roe v. Wade was decided in 1973, and the Casey case was actually decided in 1992. The fact is the science has changed considerably since that time, and every single uh, new piece of information that we get with respect to uh, the, the formation of unborn babies uh, errs on the side of uh, that this is a horrible, horrible thing that is happening in, in America, and, and I'm, I'm very pleased uh, that the court is going to, to look at these cases. The Supreme Court won't hear oral arguments for this case until the fall, and we won't know their decision for likely months after that, but what would your reaction be if your state's pro-life law was the one to chip away at Roe versus Wade and pave a path for it to be overturned. Well, I, I would I'd be ecstatic if if our case that gets heard is uh, helps us get there. Uh, I was actually lieutenant governor of the state and the leader of the state senate when we passed this piece of legislation back in 2018, and so I would be ecstatic. But the, to be perfectly honest with you, um, for me and I think so many other pro-lifers, which state's law gets before the court is not that important. It's just that the that we see. Uh, these unborn babies, literally millions and millions of unborn babies that get protected and, and ultimately get born and, and hopefully serve a very protect, productive lives. And so, again, I, I'm, I'm pleased because I know we have very good counsel. We have good people uh, that are going to make the arguments on our behalf. And so that makes me feel good. But again, um, this, this isn't territorial. This is about saving babies in America. Absolutely. As you shared with me already and as you put out in your statement responding to the Supreme Court announcement, you highlighted how much more we and the scientific community have learned about the unborn child since the 1973 Roe v. Wade decision. Can you speak more to that? Well, and I think this is a very important point because there, there are those who want to argue that uh, there's only one reason that this court is, is decided to hear this, and it's because the court has changed. And, and there's make no mistake, we are very, very fortunate that President Trump got elected, uh, one of the strongest pro-life presidents in, in our nation's history, and, and that he appointed justices to the court that, that have um, views similar to ours. But make no mistake, we are not uh, being allowed to hear this case before the court because the court has changed. It's because the science mm. has changed. The science has improved drastically. We now know when you can hear a heartbeat of an unborn child and how to detect it. We now know that the lungs are being formed by this time period of 15 weeks and that the baby has started practicing breathing. We know that many vital organs are in the early stages of formation at this time. And we know that the fact is that uh, an unborn child uh, could live outside the womb uh, at this time, and that's critically important, and we should not allow the decision of one human being to wreck the life of another, and I just believe in my heart that, that that's exactly what occurs uh, in these late-term abortions. 
Absolutely. We have just over a minute left, Governor, but I want to ask you this. This abortion ban after 15 weeks passed your state's Congress and was signed into law by your predecessor, former Governor Phil Bryant, before it was blocked by lower courts. Do you believe, Governor, is it the desire of Mississippi residents for this abortion ban to be enacted? It is the overwhelming view of Mississippians. And by the way, in our state, uh, Republicans are pro-life. There are many Democrats in our mm -hmm. state that are pro-life. And so this is the overwhelming view of the people of Mississippi. And, and, and at a minimum, I believe that states ought to be allowed to enact the, the laws that they want to enact when it comes to these, um, these issues that are of such importance uh, to, to my constituents. And, and so that's why I think it's so important that we're going before the court. Absolutely. This is huge news. And obviously, we'll be watching this closely in the months to come and when this hearing takes place. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us on this big week. Governor Tate Reeves of Mississippi. Thank you.